Thank you so much for being here. My name is Rich Jacob. I'm the director of the sport management program here at Medai College. And like probably all of you, also a volunteer with Coaches vs. Cancer and the American Cancer Society. And we are very pleased again to partner with the American Cancer Society and have some of our great leaders, Western New York sport, here as panelists, and all of you here to participate in a lively discussion, an information session, please, for all of us. And I'd like to introduce the regional manager of Coaches Versus Cancer in the American Cancer Society, Joanna Jacob. I've spoken to a lot of you either over email or over the phone, so it's glad to see you all in person, and I hope we can uh, meet after the forum. Uh, but again, thank you to our guests, to our panelists for taking the time to be here today. We uh, truly appreciate it. As you may know, all proceeds from this event will benefit the American Cancer Society through Coaches vs. Cancer. Uh, coaches vs. Cancer did start 20 years ago as an effort among college basketball coaches, but it has rapidly expanded over the past few years and just in the past few months here in Western New York. And We've expanded it across sports, uh, so football, soccer, softball, baseball, whatever you can name, Coaches vs. Cancer um, wants to be involved with you, and we want you to be involved with us. Um, so we're thrilled to have you here this morning, and we fully do appreciate your support as we uh, begin to finish the fight against cancer. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our host for today's panel discussion, Doug Luzak. Uh, Doug is one of Medai's actually own sport management alumni. He currently is the um, President and General Manager of Absolute Sound, Sound Systems, and Video Incorporated. He works in film, television, voiceover, radio. He's actually uh, the national host right now, or I'm sorry, the national spokesperson uh, for Curie Coffee, if anyone likes Curie Coffee. Um, Doug has hosted for the Buffalo Bills, the Buffalo Bisons, Niagara University, among others, um, and he is also a coach for Cardinal Hera High School Football, so we're glad to have him here. We think it's a perfect fit, and I'll turn it over to Doug. Well, I want to officially welcome everybody here, and right away we're going to dive into things, and I just want to welcome, uh, before we get to our panelists, first, all of you, because uh, is, this, is this actually on? I know we were having some technical difficulties early on, but maybe we'll solve this as we go along. But since we are on the coach, you guys all have coaching voices, well, I'm going to use my coaching voice. Well, first, we wouldn't have this program without you, and so far, Coaches versus Cancer has put on... Two. This is the second program like this. Back in the late fall, there was a sports psychology program. And Coaches versus Cancer is really trying to outreach into the coaching community and athletic community on hot topics and uh, putting on programs that you know coaches, officials, the athletic committee, uh, you know, community just really want to see. So I want to welcome everybody here. And if you look out, and just so that our panel first can see who's here, just with a show of hands, anybody who's a coach here first, Let's see how many people are here. I want to see exactly what kind of segment of our audience are, is who's who. What about the students here at Medi College or any other college students in the athletic administration, <coughs> sports management programs? Okay. What about any teachers also? Teachers, teachers, school administrators. Also, we have a lot of corporate sector uh, guests here today. Anybody from the corporate sector here? Very good. Very good. Uh, very good to see you. Also, a lot of officials. We have some officials here, even though you know this is a time where coaches and officials can get along. We welcome you here. Okay, very glad you come out here this morning. And there's probably a lot of others that we're going to meet here in between. I know we have some experts from the uh, character development and leadership industry, and uh, personal and professional growth industry. Uh, we have some books and uh, great programs uh, that uh, that they have to offer, so they are here as well. So before. We uh, get into topics. I want to introduce to you first our panel, and this might be the first time that all of or most of Western New York's athletic directors have ever been together <coughs> in a panel like this. And for a lot of those coaches in whatever sport, we're used to going to clinics. Well, you usually have one speaker. This time we have six. We've got a lot more out here in the audience. 
And this is kind of going to be an interactive clinic for athletic administration, specifically in the area of sports leadership and athletic administration leadership and how that works together. So first I'd like to introduce might be our uh, our most expert uh, athletic director in uh, where is it, wearing two hats, multitask, from Buffalo State College, athletic director and head football coach, Jerry Boyce. Give me some background on Jerry. Jerry's been with Buff State since 1986, and he just entered his sixth season of, uh, he was entering into the varsity competition of football in, uh, in only six years, and he developed Buff State into a premier division three program. Evidenced by the success this year in his second stint as head coach when they upset number one ranked Wisconsin Whitewater this past year and finished with a 6 and 4 record. He has over 100 wins all time under his belt and he has spent 18 total seasons as, as head coach of the program. He's been an Eastern Collegiate Athletic Conference Upstate Coach of the Year, a CNN Division III Coach of the Year, and he has recruited and mentored 12 All Americans and four academic All Americans. Of course, Great coaches also probably come from a great playing career. He started at Ithaca as a two-time All-American quarterback. He had a free agent tryout with Cleveland Browns, he played basketball, baseball, and he also earned his degree as a teacher in physical education and also a master's from Ithaca. And little be known, his most successful sport that he coaches, he, he probably left that uh, high note. He's undefeated as a track coach having won two straight championships and an undefeated dual meet record, and he left while he was on top. So we're going to know more about Jerry uh, later on and with why he left track to go into football. Uh, I don't know. But please welcome Jerry Boyce. Now, Jerry has been with Buff State for a long time. Our next athletic director I'd like to introduce, he's been with his university for a short time. From Niagara University, Tom Crowley. Tom just arrived to Niagara from Butler University, where he served as Associate Athletic Director of Internal Operations for the past five years. His experience, uh, it comes under administration, fundraising, coaching. He brings nearly three decades worth of experience. At Butler, Tom was responsible for business operations, budget oversight facilities, as well as game and event management. He also played a key role in the development and strategic planning for Butler's athletic operations. Before joining the Bulldogs, Tom also held development positions at Temple, the University of Vermont. But while at Temple, Tom helped increase charitable giving to the athletic department through his work with the school's Owl Club donor organization. And at Vermont, he became the school's first fully dedicated fundraiser for athletics, spending one season as an assistant men's basketball coach for the Catamounts. He began his coaching career as an assistant men's basketball coach at Penn in 1979, where the Quakers went to the NCAA Final Four that year. He held assistant basketball coaching positions at Xavier, Rutgers, and Stanford before, before becoming head coach at St. Michael's College in 1990. He also served two years as the head men's coach at Christian Brothers University in Tennessee. He was also a graduate of the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. And he was captain of the 1978 Penn basketball team that advanced to the NCAA Sweet 16. He has his own athletic accolades to be proud of. So please welcome Tom Crowley. <laughs> and moving on to one of our own right here at Medi College, Pete Lonergan. He also wears two hats as the athletic director and head women's basketball coach. Pete's been with Medi for over nine years and he serves as, as the AD for the past six. And recently he has really worn both hats very, very well as his women's basketball team is having huge success. This past season in 2011-2012, they captured the Dye's first ever ECAC championship, and they have also won five straight Allegheny Mountain uh, Collegiate Athletic Conference championships and advanced to the NCAA tournament for the past six years. Pete also gained notoriety in the 1980s as the head men's basketball coach at Niagara University, and later he also worked in radio and TV as the voice of Niagara Canisius and basketball. Well, in 2001-2002, he returned to coaching here at Medi College with the men's team, and he's a true teacher of the game. He has at least 10 former players and assistants that have gone on to head coaching positions at the collegiate level. He has his own coaching tree. So please welcome Pete Lauder. Next, I'd like to introduce 
to Bill Maher from Canisius College. In 2005, Bill Maher, he began his eighth year back with the Blue and Gold because Bill is an alumni of Canisius College. In seven seasons, Canisius has advanced to eight NCAA tournaments in addition to a WNIT appearance in 2009, helping start off the most successful seven-year run in the school's history. He also helped the Canisius lacrosse programs enjoy their most successful years in conference history on both the men's and women's sides, winning MAC championships in 2012. And they also advanced to the NCAA tournament with the first time in school history that both teams swept both titles in the same sport. And in addition, synchronized swimming also continued their dominance during the 2011-2012 seasons, winning the program's 15th straight ECAC championship. Overall, 17 Kanisha squads have accumulated 29 conference or regional championships. The Canisius campus has also undergone a huge uh, renovation project, including upgrades to the Nevsky Sports Complex and the Kessler Athletic Center. Over the past seven seasons, 34 student athletes have won conference player or rookie of the year awards, including six in each of the past two seasons. And prior to Bill's arrival, Canisius won 24 or rookie of the year awards, uh, player of the year awards in the previous 10 seasons. Needless to say, Bill is spearheading a big turnaround at Canisius. Also, under Bill's watch, 13 players have been drafted professionally, including two first-round selections in the National Lacrosse League draft. Also, uh, John Axford pitches for the Milwaukee Brewers, and Corey Conacher just made the NHL's Tampa Bay Lightning a hockey team and is off to a great start. Canisius has a great Western New York rivalry going on with uh, especially Niagara, where they have the Canal Cup and the Battle of the Bridge series going on year-round. Canisius has 21 student athletes recognized on the district level as All-Americans, including seven Capital One academic All-Americans. And also, Bill holds uh, two great roles as a member of the NCAA Legislative Council, and he also chairs the MAC Men's Lacrosse Committee, and is also a member of the MAC Technology Committee. And like I said before, he's a Canisius graduate, and he's glad to be back with the blue and gold after a short stint at UB while he served as the Bulls Interim Athletic Director for two years back in the mid-2000s. Please welcome Bill Mark. And next, I'd like to welcome William Morris, Damon College's Athletic Director. And William is also new to his position, having joined Damon back in late 2011. Bill also has come on to strengthen and reorganize its athletic department in hopes of gaining acceptance as an NCAA two member. He faced that challenge. Well, congratulations to Bill and Damon College because they were approved and accepted by the NCAA to full Division II status, status in July of 2012. Bill has worked to establish several corporate sponsorships, including team apparel sponsorships with Adco Sports and Nike. He has also uh, re designed all of the branding for Damon College, including logo colors, which were later trademarked and licensed. And Morris arrived with uh, a past history at Niagara University, where he served as Associate Athletic Director for Compliance and Administration for many years back in the mid-2000s. He was responsible for overseeing intercollegiate athletic programs such as baseball, volleyball, women's soccer, swimming and diving, along with the day-to-day -day education and implementation of NCAA and MAC rules and regulations. And before his stint at Niagara, Morris was also the athletic director of compliance at the University of Central Florida uh, in early 2002 to mid-2003. He was also their interim athletic director, too. He spent two years as a graduate assistant in compliance at Canisius College, and he worked towards his master's in sports administration. And he also comes from a combined uh, athletic career, having been a Canisius uh, alumni specifically playing baseball there also. He started way at the bottom working as a student employee in the Athletic Communications Office. Please welcome again, let's hear it for William Morris. <laughs> and last but not least, a member of our, member of our panel, Danny White from the University of Buffalo. Danny is also new to the West New York community in UB, having come on to join UB in mid-2012. He hasn't even had his year anniversary yet. He's a former Notre Dame basketball player and New Orleans native. He has had great success in raising funds at all of his programs at universities he's been part of, including the University of Mississippi, Cal State University, Fresno, 
and he has also coached and, coached and served as administrator at mid-American schools such as Ohio University and Northern Illinois. And prior to Buffalo, while he was at the University of Mississippi, he served as the Old Miss Executive Director of the UMAA Foundation, where he raised over $17 million two years in a row, 2010, 2011. He comes from a deep family in intercollegiate, intercollegiate athletics. His father, Kevin, is the Director of Athletics at Duke University. His brother, Michael, is the head men's basketball coach, and his brother, Brian, is the Associate Athletics Director at Louisiana Tech. And at the age of 32, Danny is the youngest athletic director in the football bowl subdivision ranks. From 2007 to 2009, he was also at Cal State University, Fresno. He managed the Bulldog Foundation to raise over $7 million annually for Fresno State Athletics. He cultivated and solicited the three largest major gifts in the history of the school's athletic program. And in addition to his development studies and duties, White also coordinated Fresno's football scheduling and supervised the men's and women's golf program. At Northern Illinois, he managed the Husky Athletic Scholarship Fund, and he raised membership by 30%. He also contributed to the completion of private funding of the $14 million Academic and Athletic Performance Center. <coughs> and he began way back in 2005 uh, working uh, at the University of Mississippi, where he coordinated a $10 million annual fund. And again, I mentioned that he started as a basketball player at the University of Notre Dame and also played at Thompson University. And he uh, graduated with a bachelor's degree in business administration and earned his master's degrees in both business administration, sports administration from Ohio, uh, Ohio University and working towards his doctorate in higher education from Mississippi. One more time, let's hear it for all of our panelists. <laughs> Let's just take a moment of silence to remember his great work, his memory, and his efforts. <laughs> 